All right. This is Sound Booth Theater Live, y'all. Thanks for coming to hang out with me. Oh man, I forgot to post. I forgot to post about this on Discord. Um, anyone here who is on our Discord server, could you please um, make an announcement at everyone, I guess, in the Discord server about this? Um, thanks, uh, everybody, for coming in. We got five people here so far. Who else is? Who else is here? Uh, what is happening? Why am I only doing right clicks? There we go. First time I've ever been a part of this live show. Not sure what to expect. Kawar and Draper, well, you're in for a treat. It's just pure silliness, and it's just me reading requests from the audience. So thanks for coming. Thanks for hanging out with us. I really appreciate it. We have a fun show today. Uh, it's a, it's going to be a bit shorter because uh, we have, first of all, just one request for actual narration, which is for Blackthorn Dark, Dark Judgment by Scotty Futch. I believe this is book two of the series. I haven't really uh, looked too hard, but if you check the description in the, uh, if you're on YouTube, you can check the description below and you'll find a link to the Kindle version of the book. You can look at, uh, investigate the rest of Scotty Futch's um, books and, you know, fill out the series, see what all is available from him. We actually, I actually did a reading for Scotty Futch uh, two weeks ago the last request only that happened so um that one was really funny <laughs> so i encourage you guys to check it out but that's our only narration today uh well there are only narration of a book um right after that i'm going to jump right into cringe theater and if you guys don't know about cringe theater um that is the part of this show that is completely nsfw um it's going to be vile and in poor taste and uh, something that you're going to want to hide your kids and hide your wife and hide your husband from. Um, because it's uh, that ridiculous, but it's also hilarious. So um, stay stay tuned at your own risk for that one. Mr. My Michael Ryan Soilo, our, uh, our resident grumpy book reviewer, suggested it as he likes to do. He likes to completely humiliate me so um uh you know that's that's his right that's what the requests only poll is there for so if you guys love love it when i uh when i make a total ass of myself live on camera um please vote in our requests only poll uh or make nominations uh if you haven't done that before if you don't know what i'm talking about Go to our Facebook group, the Sound Booth Theater Live Facebook group. The link again is in the description for the YouTube video, and uh, join join our join our group, and uh, look at the look at the rules when you get in there. So uh, our last request is me singing Hakuna Matata, but with Andrea from Super Sales on Superheroes in place of Timon. And with Miller in place of Pumbaa. So I actually did go back and listen to the song one once before I, I started this. And actually, there's like a lot of dialogue and stuff. And then there's a bit of um, Simba singing as well. So I don't know who to do character-wise for Simba. I think maybe I'll just be myself for Simba. Uh, or, oh, maybe I'll be Quantum. Yeah, I'll be Quantum for Simba. Uh, so yeah, that's going to end the show. And I think we'll have easily less than an hour for this this week uh but uh afterwards i will be back in our discord discord server probably 30 minutes later i'll be in our discord server uh if you haven't been to our discord server again all the links that i'm talking about are in the description below on the youtube video and you can find find, find us there and uh, I, i'll be i'll be there streaming myself playing some arc uh, if, uh, survival evolved that's what it's called it's a, it's a dinosaur taming survival game so uh i've been kind of obsessed with that we have our own sound booth theater server so go on down to our discord server and hang out if you want to watch me stream anyway here goes we're gonna start off with blackthorn and of course i gotta show you the the cover <laughs> yeah. oh my god i'm so sorry this cover is Ridiculous. All right. So one thing I, I got, I got to say, it's hard for me to look at these, you know, really 
it, it looks like kind of stock 3D models dressed up. Uh, <laughs> but I think I think he I think Scotty makes them for laughs and he definitely gets them out of me. So uh, that's what this is. I have no idea what who is that? Who is the ninja chick? You know who she reminds me of? She reminds me of uh, what's her name? Mai Shiranui from Fatal Fury. Uh, she has the massive honkers and she uses a fan. Um, I really loved that game. I What I really loved was the anime, F Fatal Fury 2, when I was a kid. I loved that. Uh, and then it looks like Andrea. <laughs> looks like Andrea from Super Sales right next to her. And then a couple of hunks. A couple of werewolf hunks. Um, so yeah, this is going to be our first, our first uh, request for the day. Uh, let me get the banner up. Blackthorn Dark Judgment by Scotty Futch. And before I get started, I just want to say hi to everyone who's here. I see, all right, so Kawaren Draper, thanks again for coming. I hope you enjoy your first Sound Booth Theater Live. Rasta Life Reggae, apparently my number one fan because he's here first. Uh, JS Grolke, good to see you, brother. Uh, Michael Paulson Durr, always a regular. And Rasta Life has asked me, is Dave Wilmarth in the mix? Not today. But if you want to see me narrate some Dave Wilmarth live, just request on the poll. Again, go check out the uh, comments or the description and the YouTube video, and you will find a link to our Facebook group will you, where, well, where, you, where you will be able to find our requests only poll. So here goes with Blackthorn. So Scotty, ah, I just stepped on my own headphones. Scotty has uh, provided me with some character descriptions. His character descriptions are usually quite useful. So let's check them out. There's like five to six people who speak. One, and this is the person's name is one. Oh, Tori Wilson's here. What's up, Tori? Um, the character's name is one. And I don't really understand the character description. The page can sound like anyone, really. Does he mean the narrator? I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand that. We'll see. Uh, Blackthorn. The MC is confident and a little smug. Serious, but joking, if that makes sense. Also tired. He's seen a lot of shit, so to speak. So uh, this one, you know, I guess the most significant character I've used this particular voice for uh, in Sound Booth Theater Productions as of late would be uh, from Planet Kill. Planet Kill 2 should be out any day now. I don't know what is taking ACX so long. We submitted it forever ago. But um, there, there's a character named Pierce. He's the main male character in that, in that book. So I'm going to be using his voice. There's a lawyer in the beginning who would probably sound professional and annoyed in the beginning, but become condescending and arrogant, kind of like some woman named Karen complaining to customer service about wanting a manager. Okay, I know exactly who you're talking about there. So the lawyer is a male Karen. The judge should probably sound like a judge might sound at first, but then slowly become more agitated and high strung. I can already tell this is going to be a fun scene. Uh, I, you know what I'm going to use? I'm going to use a voice I did for a meritocracy. There's a character, I can't remember his name, but there's a character who is quite centrist. There's a lot of politicians in that in that series and one of them was very centrist um kind of the most reasonable person there and i'm going to use his voice for that uh dallin or dalin i can't i'm going to call him dallin dallin is basically a pompous douche and should sound like one of those rich guys who thinks he's important because of daddy's money and thus everything in the world is his entitlement okay that's very easy uh i love doing those kinds of characters branwin should be sweet and sincere highly emotional anyone else that might pop up can probably sound any way you like without it being much Okay, I can't tell if Branwyn is supposed to be a male or female, but we'll find out, I guess, when we get to them. Sweet and sincere. Okay, as for the scene, the MC has been arrested, sort of, for the crime of insulting a noble. He is taken to trial, but things go differently than the judge and plaintiff might think, because the MC doesn't play along. All right, well, here goes Blackthorn, Dark Judgment, by Scotty Futch. Narration coming right now. The courthouse... And I mess up the second word. The courthouse proved to be a similar design. The courthouse proved to be similar in design to those that he had seen on Earth. White stone pillars held up an overhanging rook, 
marbled tiled stairs lead up led up to a small courtyard in such a way that people were forced to look up at the building just a little a subconscious reminder to the viewer that they would not be above the law perhaps oh we got more uh we got more people commenting in the chat michael paulson durr loved the ameritocracy series thank you for listening such a, i really enjoy it as well I, oh, Tori Wilson pictures the judge as Gilbert Godfrey in Problem Child. Okay, well, mm, you're tempting me to do his voice. I'll see if I feel like it when I get to it. Okay. Militia Captain. Militia Captain. Lord, we will take you directly to the magistrate. This matter should be handled swiftly said the militia captain. Blackthorn inclined his head, but said nothing regarding the captain's words. He doubted the matter would be handled swiftly at all. He did, however, ask about Sonia. He had seen her nowhere along the route. Ah, I do not know of her whereabouts, Lord. If she is here, then she is no doubt seated already. The captain inclined his head, then called out an order to his men. Four of the twenty militiamen stepped forward. The five men led Black Blackthorn up the steps and into the building. Excuse me. The entrance of the building was barren of decoration. The walls were white and the brickwork immaculate. The militia captain passed Blackthorn off to a balding, middle-aged man who had been pacing nervously until that moment. Excuse me, I just had a big meal. Once their duty was fulfilled, the quintet of guards left with all possible haste while they maintained their professional decorum. The middle-aged man looked Blackthorn up and down for a moment, then shook his head. Uh, who is this? Okay, a, a lawyer. <sighs> Come with me, Lord. He practically choked on the last word of that sentence, but managed to speak his name before he went silent. Blackthorn. Is there a reason why you think that you can speak to me in that manner? Asked Blackthorn in a calm and measured tone. The man absolutely stank of corruption. A single glance into this man's eyes told him many things about how his morning was going to go. The images present in the man's surface thoughts nearly made him vomit. The man, supposedly his attorney, snorted once more. <laughs> With all due respect, if any is due, you are no lord. I don't know what you did to the militia, but it is clear from your attire that you are merely a common dreamer putting on airs. Blackthorn looked at the man for a moment, then snorted. <laughs> It doesn't matter what you think. Show me where I need to go, then politely go back to where a miserable little man like you belongs. How dare you, snarled the man. He poked Blackthorn in the chest with a bony little finger. Do you know who I am? Uh, what's up, Eric Rounds? Good to see you. I don't care who you are, replied Blackthorn. Take me where I need to go and keep your mouth shut while you do it. I refuse to be your lawyer. You're on your own. Why would I need a lawyer? If that's all you're here for, then you've wasted your time. The man laughed in Blackthorn's face, then threw his hands in the air. <laughs> Whatever you say, Lord Blackthorn, you'll get my bill for the time wasted. I won't be paying any bill for services not rendered, nor did I request that you render any of said services. The hell you won't! I'll turn you over to the crown for impersonating a noble. Will they have someone check my title, just like the militia captain did? Pfft, <laughs> The militia captain is easily impressed. Before Blackthorn could speak to what the man had said, another man approached them quickly. It was a page of the court, a young noble, who had been tasked with locating Blackthorn. The magistrate did not, did not want to be kept waiting. The lawyer waved the page off, then snorted at Blackthorn once more before he let go, left to go find a seat. He wanted to witness this fake noble make a fool of himself. The page led Blackthorn through a series of hallways and then walked him into a large open area similar to a small arena. 
there were random people seated in the stands nearby, one of which was Sonia. Next to her sat Scraggles. Strangely, both the alchemist and the grocer whom he frequented both the alchemist and the grocer whom he frequented sat nearby as well. He recognized quite a few people in the audience, as a matter of fact. There did seem to be quite the turnout for this trial. Sonia gave him a quick wave and offered a smile. He waved back, an action that caused much laughter among what had to be a few hundred spectators. It was a strange way to hold a trial, but it was fun so far at least. He was led to a small circle inlaid with red stone. A short wall was to his immediate right, but its purpose was not immediately apparent, though he did suspect that the little turd who caused this mess was on the other side of it. On a nearby dais sat a man who wore dark black robes. He had what might be the world's bushiest snow-white eyebrows and a pinched face that had been reddened due to annoyance. The moment that Blackthorn's eyes met the eyes of that judge, a foul odor permeated his nostrils. Scenes from the man's life began to filter through his mind. Blackthorn's eyes narrowed due to what he saw, but he said nothing. I see that the esteemed Lord Blackthorn has chosen to grace us with his presence at last, said the judge. Blackthorn looked up at the judge, then said, You can thank the lawyer previously assigned to me for wasting everyone's time. What do you mean? When were you assigned a lawyer? There was a man waiting for me in the hallway who claimed to be such. Uh, I know nothing of this matter. Normally there are no lawyers involved in such proceedings. I did not ask for one, and he decided to insult me the moment that he had me alone instead of taking me to the courtroom. Blackthorn took a, took a breath, fully intent on speaking further. A familiar voice spoke up from the other side of the wall. Your Honor, this is all incredibly tedious. Can we dispense with this criminal's excuses? I'm a busy man. Ah, uh, yes. The judge looked to the source of that voice and nodded, then looked over to Blackthorn. As you are late to this trial, you will be required to pay a penalty one fifty thousand. No. No? I won't pay a penalty for being late. The judge stared at him aghast. The color left his cheeks, then suddenly flared back into them with such excitement that even his bushy eyebrows seemed to shoot forward slightly. How dare you? Blackthorn stared coldly at the judge. Don't take that tone with me. Um, the plaintiff? Who's the plaintiff again? <laughs> Who's the magistrate? I don't fucking know. All right, I'm going to make up voices. I don't know who these characters are, so... Don't take that tone with me. D do you see, Your Honor? Asked the plaintiff. He, he has no respect for his betters. I can see that, exclaimed the judge. Blackthorn, I find you in contempt of this court. As well you should. I certainly feel nothing but contempt for this highly contemptible court. Uh, magistrate. You dare to make a mockery of this court so brazenly? shrilled the magistrate. Blackthorn took a deep breath and strongly inhaled the stench of corruption that permeated the air. He gazed confidently at the judge. You're one to talk. Wasn't it you who took a 120,000 Jaren bribe from the plaintiff two days ago? What? asked the judge, his eyebrows seeming to deflate due to the shock. His reaction was priceless and did not go unnoticed by the crowd. An uproar echoed through the room for a moment as people cried out for more information. Too shocked to speak, the judge could only stare in bewilderment as Blackthorn continued. 
The man who pretended to be a lawyer is named Enric Eld. He is the same man who took the money to your secret special meeting place down in the southwestern part of town. It took place in the special room of that equally secret private brothel. You know, the one of which you are a founding member. Sorry, let me uh, turn off my ringer. The more he spoke, the more the judge began to think about all of it. The stench of corruption around him washed outward like a tidal wave. The man was garbage, head to foot. He works for that pile of shit, Dallin Davrin, the plaintiff. Okay, so Dallin Davrin is the plaintiff. Um, so I will trade the voice I used for the plaintiff to the magistrate, and then... I'll come up with a new voice for Dallin. So, excuse me if I can do nothing but act like this entire trial is a farce. I have never heard such bold and blatant lies spoken in this court in all my years as a magistrate. Okay, so the magistrate is the judge. Got it. Said the judge while he shook his head. Never in my life. Have I been so insulted? With a face like yours, I'm sure that too is a lie, replied Blackthorn sarcastically. Some might think him quite stupid for his actions, but these people did not know his life. Once before, he had, once before, he had been hauled in front of a judge and had his life ruined when he had done nothing wrong. He refused to even pretend to go along with a court trial held by the pinched face rodent on, his, on the stand. Do you have a death wish, fool? Do you think that since you are a dreamer, you are above the law? Asked the judge. He was far too surprised by the recent events in his court to show pre pretense. He legitimately wanted to know if the defendant was insane. Bushy eyebrows flared wildly as the judge attempted to make sense of the brazen man who stood before him. At a loss for words, it was not the judge who spoke next. It was his co-conspirator. Your Honor, clearly this man is deranged. I ask that you cast your judgment on him immediately for the sake of public decorum, called out Dallin. Yes, of course, the judge harumphed and attempted to regain his sense of gravitas. It was difficult to achieve when his face was as red as a tomato, and yet he managed it in the end. Lord Blackthorn, I hereby accuse you of contempt for this court, flagrant disregard for the law, leveling insults and blatantly false allegations against a sitting magistrate, and, said the judge, only for Blackthorn to interrupt him. It was not with words that he spoke his, his disagreement, it was with a loud yawn. <sighs> are you, are you yawning at me? asked the judge, his mouth agape. I was a little bored. Yes. You! Do you not understand just how serious this is? You're about to be sent to prison for a long time, if not, if not outright person, if not outright executed. What makes you think you can carry out that sentence, even if you pass judgment? The militia sure won't be able to do it. Do you think I'll continue to stand here and wait for you to send for someone more capable? You! Yes, yes, I do so dare, said Blackthorn with a dismissive wave of his hand. Is there no end to your contempt? This is most unbecoming of a lord. I would appreciate if a living garbage fire such as yourself would stop trying to tell me what may or may not be proper decorum. You're dirtier than a coal miner's underwear, and the stench of your corruption is nauseating. That's it. By the power vested in me as magistrate of Argent, I do hereby sentence you to execution. Gee, was it something I said? The judge slammed his gavel down atop a wooden plate on his desk. Blackthorn looked around briefly. He saw no magical effects that might have taken place. 
All he did see was a few bailiffs step forward to restrain him. Fuck off, he told them in his eloquent manner. Blackthorn's eyes blazed red and his aura and his aura lashed out in their direction. The bailiffs, each of them, each of them was a muscular man in the prime of life, immediately began to shriek and flail their arms. They ran from the courtroom like their collective asses were on fire. You! What? The judge stared in shock as his trusted bailiffs fled from the defendant. The courtroom was in an uproar. People of all social status were yelling and calling for various outcomes. Some wanted the criminal some wanted the criminal to be executed. Many others with a grievance against the judge called for his resignation. Your honor, called Dallin, given the extraordinary nature of these events, I am willing to render aid to the court. Proper compensation pending, of course, amended, amended the man. Yes, anything. Capture this criminal at once, and the city will do everything in its power to reward you for your civic-minded offer, exclaimed the judge. Blackthorn quirked his eyebrow. What exactly did the other man think he could do that the bailiffs could not? He suddenly walked forward into Blackthorn's view, a bloated and pompous little man. He wore a bejeweled beret, fine silk clothes, and held a chain in his hand. He tugged on that chain with a great deal of force, and a young woman walked forward into the view as well. Blackthorn's eyes immediately narrowed. What was this about? My slave, Branwyn, will take care of this ruffian with no problem, said Dallin. The slave in question had curved horns, yellow eyes, skin the color of bronze in most places, and hair like a flaming sunset. She sported a set of wicked claws and ears that reminded Blackthorn of his own, as they flared out at certain points like a dragon's frill. Branwyn? Ah, yes, you did say that she was your family's prized slave, did you not? asked the judge. Yes. She is dragonborn, perhaps the last of her kind. He tugged on her chain, and the girl reluctantly stepped forward. Her body was a strange combination of over-sexualized feminine architecture and supreme physicality. She had the muscles of a trained warrior, but she carried her top weight strangely. Dallin noticed that Blackthorn was looking at his slave, he smirked, then tugged on her chain once more. Drawn close by her master, she did nothing as he placed his piggy little fingers to one of her breasts, then began to fondle them. The family alchemist does excellent work. These breasts were not cheap, but they'll pay for themselves when I see them covered in your blood. Blackthorn ignored the pompous portly critter. His attention was on Branwyn. She was clearly reluctant to heed her master's call, and yet she did not struggle much. She obviously had been owned by their family for quite some time. You are dragonborn? asked Blackthorn slowly. Y yes, the blood of the noble dragon's courses. Oh, no. Uh, yes, the blood of the noble dragon's courses through her veins. Her tribe is extinct now. She is without a doubt the last of her kind in this world. The last living dragon! We're close enough, given she is more woman than beast. Dallin squeezed her breast once more, then snickered at him. <laughs> Blackthorn quirked an eyebrow. So there are no other dragons in this world? Is that what you're saying? Fool! That is common knowledge! But then, you are a dreamer. Ignorant of this world and many other things, apparently, said Dallin. <laughs> Trey, that is a funny picture to imagine. Thank you for that. Blackthorn eyed him for a moment, but as he was about to speak, Dallin interrupted. You may be able to use your little parlor trick to frighten away idiots. However, you will find that dragons are fearless. In fact, my little Branwyn can do something similar. 
He unsnapped the chain from her collar, then slapped her on the ass. Go put the fear of the Davrin family into that miserable wretch! She did not speak, but she did step forward. Her eyes locked with blackthorns. Briefly, he wondered if there had been some sort of spark of recognition in her eyes, and she seemed slightly confused. Yet, if there was something more there, it ended quickly. A sudden wave of chilling fear washed over the courtroom. It was an omnidirectional blast without any semblance of control. People in the audience began to scream. Even the judge cried out in shock. Blackthorn merely continued to look at her, however, as it harmlessly washed over him. What was dragon fear to another dragon? He did feel a slight tingle from her assault, but it was completely unfocused. Had she been able to direct it at him fully, it might have been troublesome, but if she could not, then it would prove useless. He shook his head. Dallin, of course, saw it immediately, assumed that he had succumbed to the attack. See? Look how his head shakes! Blackthorn sighed loudly, then looked at Branwen once more. Not bad, I guess. Try mine. He unleashed the full might of his aura directly upon her, even allowing himself to push past his limits and use his life force to bolster it. Branwyn cried out in shock, then took several heavy steps back. She clutched at her chest and slung her head wildly from side to side. What? exclaimed Dallin. What had just happened? He had never seen his prized slave do such a thing. Listen carefully, said Blackthorn. Branwyn's head snapped up and she stared at him with wild and troubled eyes. Do you want to be set free? Branwyn, stop listening to his nonsense and kill him! A spark of blue light flashed from her lower back. She gasped loudly as her slave seal generated excruciating waves of pain that nearly dropped her to her, knee dropped her, to her knees. Blackthorn glowered darkly at the slave trader, but he was not able to do more than that before Branwen launched herself forward with incredible speed. Claws gleaming in the light and a feral snarl on her lips, she seemed fully intent on taking his head. And that was Blackthorn, uh, Dark Judgment by Scotty Futch. So uh, that was pretty silly and fun. Uh, I really enjoy reading uh, Scotty's books when they get uh, requested so feel free feel free to cre feel free to keep requesting him y'all or scotty feel free to keep requesting yourself we don't mind as long as the uh the votes are coming in isk says hi jeff much love to you and the sound booth team recently been choosing my audiobooks choosing my audiobooks by searching for sound booth instead of by author looking forward to the next everybody loves our chest me too thank you isk love seeing people say that um, Troy Bergeron, can't wait for the next We Could Be Heroes and Monster Hunt. And when I say they are, they are coming. They're very difficult to produce. So please be patient with us. Monster Hunt 2 will be releasing when we release, when we launch our, our new platform. Um, and if any of you haven't heard, we are developing our own independent audiobook distribution platform. So stay tuned. Keep on our Facebook page, go to our website, sign up for the newsletter, whatever you want to do to uh, stay updated on when we launch the platform. We're aiming for early June. It's really, it's really tough to say exactly when it's gonna launch. We have to talk to our devs. Um, you know, it's it. Time keeps on ticking. You know, um, and I don't know anything about this stuff. I'm just. I'm just doing my best to trust professionals to get this thing done. And so whatever hangups they might have, it's kind of out of our hands, but we're doing our best. We're going to be producing lots of stuff to launch all at once. Um, so keep an eye out. We did announce the first title that we are going to be, the, 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 the first title that we've announced that's going to be on the platform is um, a Carrie Summers. Uh, where is it? I can't remember the name of the title. I'm sorry, guys. One second. Uh, it is, yes, Tales of a North Blood by Carrie Summers. So Annie's going to be narrating that one. Uh, she's going to get started narrating it, narrating it in a few weeks, I think. Um, and yeah, so that's the first one we've announced. And guys, Tales of a North Blood has kicked 
ass on the Amazon Kindle store. So go check it out if you haven't yet. It's Carrie Summers' new series, um, and uh, the the cover is fantastic. So go check that out if you can. Next request. All right, uh, I'm gonna do the cringe theater now. Let me uh, change the banner here. Hakuna Matata. No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. Creepy Grandpa text. I don't know. I don't know what else to call it. Um, but this was requested by Michael Ryan Soilo. But for anyone who who didn't hear me say that just now, um, I'm just gonna say that he wrote it because I don't know any way I could possibly get back at him. I know that's weak, but I don't know uh, for requesting this. I mean, I'm I'm simultaneously glad and horrified at uh, at the fact that I have to narrate this because it's gonna be hilarious, um, but it's also really messed up, and that's what cringe theater is all about: is messed up content that I am warning you you should not watch, but you probably will anyway. Hide your kids, hide your wife, hide your husband. Um, this is cringe theater. Everything that I'm about to say is going to be NSFW and should not be watched by anyone. So for those of you who don't know, um, you can find this post that Michael Ryan Soilo shared in our Facebook group. Again, check the description below the YouTube video to find the link to our Facebook group, the Sound Booth Theater Live Facebook group. Um, and it is a text conversation between a man and his grandpa. Um, his grandpa wants to know how to find porn on the internet. He can't figure it out. So he's asking his grandson for help. Uh, obviously a grandson in this era would know how to find porn. So it's a very reasonable thing to... <laughs> To ask someone that you trust to tell you how to find porn on the internet. So I'm going to be doing voices. I'll do the voice of the grandpa and the voice of the kid. I'm going to assume that he's a kid. Um, and I'm going to voice him like a kid. So here it goes. How can I find pictures of big-breasted women on here? <clears throat> Click this link and then type in what you are searching for in the white box. Images.google.com Okay. I did that, but they all have clothes on. How do I see them naked? What did you search for? Big-breasted women? You have to be more explicit. Try searching for big tits. Uh... I don't like that word. Okay, then try searching for naked women with big breasts. That worked. Thank you. Uh, how do I watch them have sex and get ejaculated on? I don't think Grandma would like that. She did like it. But now she is dead. You ejaculated on Grandma? Yes. I ejaculated all over her for more than 50 years. She was my wife and we were in love. She used to glisten like an ice rink. Jesus, Grandpa! This is too much. Sorry I asked. Don't take the Lord's name in vain. We taught you better than that. Now where can I find ejaculation sex videos? Click here. Pornhub.com Then search at the top, like on the other website. Any of Martha Stewart or Oprah Winfrey with semen in their hair? Probably not, but you can find women who look like them. How? Try searching for mature facial or ebony BBW cum shot. What is BBW? Big beautiful women. Ebony? Why not African American? I don't know, Grandpa. It's porn. Searches for black, return black men, ebony, return black women. Okay. How do I turn my volume down? I'm at Bob Evans. Grandpa! Why are you watching porn at Bob Ev Evans? Use the buttons on the side of your phone. 
Some of this terminology is too vulgar for me. I don't want to type cum shot. I want to type ejaculation. It is just the way it is. We are literally talking about blowing semen onto a woman's face, so I don't think the terminology matters. It does matter to me. Well, I guess I am just old school. How do I find a woman who has ejaculate in... How do I... Fuck. How do I find a woman who has ejaculate inside of her? Cream pie. Uh, I'm not hungry. I just ate at Bob Evans. No, that is what you search for. That is the porn term for a man ejaculating inside a woman's vagina. Do they post updates later about the baby once it is born? The women don't actually get pregnant. I can see that. They push it out. Your grandmother never did that. She would do handstands to make sure it stayed in. I don't need to know that. It is how your dad was made. She left him in and let him grow. Okay, I have to go. <laughs> oh, beautiful. So fucked up. <laughs> oh. So that was cringe theater for the day. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Thank you, Michael Ryan Soilo. Also, fuck you. But thank you for requesting that. It was hilarious. Uh, I'm sure everyone enjoyed it who was brave enough to stick around. Kawar and Draper, I'll be sure to have this discussion to my future grandson. You should. Because, the, you, you know, like 50 years from now, you're... <laughs> You're going to have to find, like, there's going to be a whole other configuration. Like, porn is going to be, like, not at all like it is now. You'll There's going to be all the technology put into it. Uh, and, yeah, there was just it's just going to be a, a mystery to you. And your grandson will have to help you with that. So, <laughs> uh, all right. So, the very last thing that we're doing today um i'm really proud this is my worst photoshop yet i think and i'm very proud of it uh let me go ahead and get rid of this banner here uh we are going to be i'm going to be singing hakuna matata and uh oh by the way this is no longer cringe theater i mean you'll probably still cringe at my performance but it's not the kind of cringe i was talking about earlier where uh i advise you not to let anyone watch it or know that you were watching it so um yeah, Hakuna Matata, and I'm going to be replacing Timon with Andrea from Super Sales on Superheroes. I'm going to be replacing Pumba with Miller from War Eternus, and then I'm going to replace Simba with Quantum Hughes from the Feedback Loop. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to uh, play the YouTube video of the song, and there's going to be like some dialogue between, and I'm just going to let that slide I'm sorry. I mean, like, it, there's no, it's it's not written down or anything, and it would have taken me a long time to, like, set it up. Uh, I think you guys will have enough fun just hearing me sing the parts that need to be sang. Um, but I'm going to do that. I'm going to sing the song, and I'm going to sign off. So thank you, everybody, for coming and joining me on this Sound Booth Theater Live requests only. I'll be doing another one in two weeks. Uh, so, again, make sure to go to our... Oh, sorry. Let me get rid of this. Make sure to go to our Facebook group. Again, links in the description below for for everyone watching on YouTube. And uh, you can find you can find our Facebook group and hang out there. You can find our Discord group. You can find the link to the book I read from today, and uh, all sorts of things, all sorts of ways to connect with us, hang out, stay updated on what Sound Booth Theater is doing in the coming months. And again. Watch out for news for the platform. We will be releasing more and more info as we have it down pat and official. Uh, I'll go ahead and... Ah, eh, you guys probably won't watch me be an idiot, so I'll go ahead and make it. Here goes Hakuna Matata, sang by Andrea from Super Sales on Superheroes, Miller from War Turnus, and... Quantum Hughes from Feedback Loop.
Oh, uh, whoop, whoop, sorry. Gotta open the door here. Hakuna Matata. What a wonderful phrase. Hakuna Matata. Ain't no passing craze. It means no worries for the rest of your days. It's our problem free philosophy. Hakuna Matata. Why, when he was a young warthog, when I was a young warthog, thanks. He found his aroma lacked a certain appeal. He could clear the savanna after every meal. I'm a sensitive soul, though I seem thick skinned. And it hurts that my friends never stood down wind. And all the shame. He was ashamed. Though I changed my name! Oh, what's in a name? And I got downhearted! How did you feel? Every time that I- Pumbaa, not in front of the kid. Oh, sorry. You know, Matata! What a wonderful phrase! Hakuna Matata! Ain't no passing craze! It means no worries for the rest of your days! Yeah, sing it, kid! It's our problem free! Philosophy. Hakuna Matata. <laughs> all right, that's it, guys. Thanks again for hanging out. I love you all. Um, and I will see you again sometime soon, with either in the next two weeks, or you can come to our Discord server and hang out with me while I stream myself playing Ark Survival Evolved. Uh... Bye.